Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Today, let's talk about another bare metal Raspberry Pi synthesizer. Bare metal means this runs without the overhead of an operating system like Linux or Windows, but it runs directly on hardware. This project is called MT32Pi and it's emulating the classic Roland MT32 sound canvas, which was a part of many 90s home PC setups. In the 90s, general media was really important for games to play back their soundtracks, and many people who grew up in that time have strong nostalgia for those sounds. But this project can do even more. You can load your own samples and sound sets and apply classic synthesizer effects like filters, reverb, envelopes to them. So if you want to, you could view this as some kind of miniature rumpler. Here we go. Here's what you need for today's project. First, of course, the Raspberry Pi. This is a Pi 3B. For the best sound quality, you also need to use an audio hat or sound card like this one from RaspiAudio.com. Here's a port extender, which will enable us to connect all the buttons, digital analog converters and the LCD to the Pi at once. As always, I'll use this breadboard for setting up the circuit as I don't want to solder my components permanently. Here are two micro switch buttons the MT32 emulator uses for switching modes. This is a KY40 rotary encoder which is used for adjusting the volume. Here's an LC display used for showing patch names and more. This is an LCD with an I2C interface, 20 columns and 4 rows. Here's a ribbon cable for connecting the breadboard to the Pi. And we also need some cables for wiring up our components to the GPIO port. And finally, you'll need an SD card to store the synthesizer software on. On our last video, there was some confusion over what the breadboard does and what this blue PCB is. The breadboard is good for building experimental circuits without soldering. Electronic components can be plugged into these tiny holes, which are connected in parallel from the middle of the breadboard to its upper and lower edge. The blue PCB is just connecting the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins to the left third of the board. You can then use these wires with pins at their end to connect a GPIO pin to an electronic part, so you don't need to solder. Now I'll plug in the rotary encoder and the two buttons. The encoder's five pins just so happen to fit into one segment of the breadboard. The buttons will close the electric circuit along their short side, so take that into account when placing them on the board. Pushing them into the board might take some pressure. Now set up the wiring according to the schematic on the GitHub page. I'm using a rotary encoder here, but if you don't have one, you can also use a 4-button setup. The rotary encoder needs to be connected to the 5.5V power supply pin and the ground pin. The buttons need to be connected to the ground pin as well. In this setup, the rotary encoder is used as a volume control. Now, let's connect the LC display. This here is a 20 column 4 rows display with an I2C interface on its back. This one is easier to set up because it only uses 4 wires. Two for the 5.5 volt power supply and ground, and another two will connect to the SDA and SCL pins. The MT32Pi will work with a handful of other display types as well, and you can look them up on their GitHub page. You can also connect the display without the I2C interface, but you'll need more wires and GPIO connections then. Installing the software is just a matter of copying all the files from the zip file to an SD card formatted in FAT32. If you want to, copy your own sound font files to the directory sound fonts, and for the MT32 emulated work, you must include the original ROMs in the ROMs folder. These ROMs are not included in the MT32 Pi distribution, but you can find them on the internet by searching for the term MT32 Pi ROMs. After you you copied the files, you must then adjust some settings in the MT32Pi config file. Open this in an editor and adjust the settings for your audio device and the LCD. If you have set up the buttons and an encoder, you will need to change the configuration accordingly as well. The address of both the audio device and the screen can most likely be found in the documentation that came with them. In my case, the screen address was 27 for example. Okay. 
time to assemble the rest of the kit and boot this. As you can see, one of the buttons will switch mode between MT32 emulation and sound font player and the other button will switch to the next ROM or the next sound font. Turning the encoder will change the volume as I already said. By the way, you can easily create sound fonts from your own samples using a tool like Polyphone, which I described in a previous video that I will link in this video's description. All in all, this project works pretty well and is very stable. And as this is a bare metal implementation, there's no latency to speak of. Loading sound fonts takes some time depending on the speed of your SD card and the size of the samples, but the LCD does a good job of communicating all the important information to you. I could totally see myself using this inside a 3D printed case for piano and string sounds. And yeah. Here's a short demo jam. By the way, if you like this video and content like this, please consider subscribing to my channel and pressing the like button. Seeing the subscriber numbers grow makes me happy and keeps me motivated to post new videos on other musical Raspberry Pi projects and a lot of other things. Thank you! Yeah, and that's it for today. I hope you found this one interesting and useful. And if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.